Welcome to the Solar Decathlon Minute. These next few days are reserved for juries to walk through and score all the houses. Since the Solar Village won't reopen to the public till Thursday, we asked Maryland Chambers to provide us with a tour guide for today. We train over 700 volunteers to uh, perform volunteer roles in a variety of functions, and today you're going to meet one of our favorite docents. Well, we're standing in front of Crowder and Drury College. This house was built for tornado resistance. The same way a bun holds the patty in the center, this house's outer structure holds the inner structure safe and secure. We're standing in front of the house of Cal State University in Sacramento. This house has a, has a total of 34 solar panels, which creates 5.5 kilowatts of energy. It also has a system where it collects rainwater, which is used to water and plant crops. We're standing in front of New York City Tech, which uh, in New York, there's not a lot of space to have single story houses. So they built a house where you can stack one on top of another. That's why the solar panels are on the sides. This is Indigo Pine, built by Clemson University. I like to call it the Lego house because it was the only house in the village that is built on site. It has a total of 34 solar panels, which creates a total of 9.4 kilowatts of energy per hour. This is a house built by Texas, Germany. It has a system wherein you can collect rainwater to water plants. It also has an edible garden where you can pick fruits and veggies right out of your backyard. One of the contests in the Solar Decathlon is comfort. Team Solar Cal Poly created a house where wooden frames insulate the entire house, keeping it cool inside. We're standing in front of the Nest Home, built by Missouri University of Science and Technology. The interesting thing about this home, it's built using two metal shipping containers covered in recycled wood. I think everyone's aware of Hurricane Sandy. Stevens Institute of Technology built a house wherein it can withstand the power of a hurricane. In fact, it's airtight and even waterproof. We're staying in front of a house built by Team New York Alfred. Something interesting about this house is that it has an hydronic floor heating system, which uh, is powered using 35 solar panels, making a total of 11.5 kilowatts of energy per hour. We're standing in the front of the house built um, by West Virginia and Rome. This house is very unique because it's the only house in the village built uh, with an exterior made out of plaster. They chose plaster because it's very durable and weather resistant. This is the grow home. In Buffalo, during the winter, food has to be exported from a different area, which makes it very costly. The team came up with an idea wherein they uh, grow their own food in a personal greenhouse. This is Team OC's house. In Orange County, there's sometimes a situation where you have to move in with your parents or your parents have to move in with you. So this house gives a chance for you and your parents to have the privacy that you need. This is Team UC Davis. This house was built for migrant farm workers. It also has a rainwater collecting system, which can be used to water plants and crops. This house was built by Team Mazka. It's one of the most affordable houses in the whole Solar Village. It cost the team less than $200,000 to build it. And that's all for our mini tour. To meet Sean and all the other awesome volunteer docents providing free tours, get yourself to the Orange County Great Park this weekend. And now for the daily results. It looks like top billing goes to Missouri S&T, who has toppled Stevens to a second place standing, while you at Buffalo successfully defends their third place ranking for another day. That's all for today's Solar Decathlon Minute. We'll see you tomorrow for another update.